Spurgeon. I love the feel of the book, though. <laughs> I always enjoy binding it and holding on to it. The solidity. You know, a lot of times people don't have a plan, hardly recognize that there's a purpose, run into circumstances that seem to frustrate their job setting or their way of life and disrupts what they're doing and they lose their bearings. They forget who they are and what they are sometimes. Men are notorious for putting a lot of their self-esteem and their self-worth into their job, into their vocation, rather than God's avocation for them. Because, you see, God has a plan. God has a purpose. And God designed the entire universe with design and purpose. And we can look at that and see that there must be a reason and purpose for why and what happens because everything seems to interrelate to each other. There's nothing that's independent of everything except God. Other than that, we see how all things work together in some way and they depend upon each other for whatever it is that they are doing. Like in the universe, the cosmic clashes of what we see, the stars with their emanations of radiation and irradiant light that goes forward from atomic fissure that's occurring inside the solar flaring of their inner mass and how that works to coordinate the orbits that are in the universe with which they spin around each other and yet we have here on earth without even being able to see those things we're standing existing and being on a round ball that holds us on its surface by gravity and they all work together so in your life there may be things that are going on that you can't see or you don't understand or you don't recognize the purpose but God has designed it that way so that you would learn to depend on him who knows all of it because you only know a little of it in Spurgeon, as we look at devotionals and devotionals as our way of finding out what's God planned for today, it says, For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house Israel among all nations. Like as corn is sifted in a sieve, yet not the least grain fall upon the earth. From Amos. Every sifting comes by divine command and permission. Satan must ask leave before he can lay a finger upon Job. Even more so, in some sense, our siftings are directly the work of heaven, for the text says, I will sift the house of Israel. Satan, like a drudge, may hold the sieve, hoping to destroy the corn, but the overruling hand of the master is accomplishing the purity of the grain by the very process which the enemy intended to be destructive. Precious but much sifted corn of the Lord's floor be comforted by the blessed fact that the Lord directs both flail and sieve to his own glory and to your eternal profit. The Lord Jesus will surely use the fan which is in his hand and will divide the precious from the vile. All are not Israel that are of Israel. The heap on the barn floor is not the clean provender and hence the winnowing process must be performed. In the sieve, true weight alone has power. Husks and chaff, being devoid of substance, must fly before the wind, and only solid corn will remain. Observe the complete safety of the Lord's wheat. Even the least grain has a promise of preservation. God himself sifts, and therefore it is stern and terrible work. He sifts them in all places among all nations. He sifts them in the most effectual manner, like as corn is sifted in a sieve. And yet for all this, not the smallest, lightest, or most shriveled grain is permitted to fall to the ground. Every individual believer is precious in the sight of the Lord. A shepherd would not lose one sheep, nor a jeweler one diamond, nor a mother one child, nor a man one limb of his body. 
nor will the Lord lose one of his redeemed people. However little we may be, if we are the Lord's, we may rejoice that we are preserved in Christ Jesus. Whenever trials come and tribulations that accomplish in us some work that God is doing that we don't understand, often people complain and blame the devil or blame the circumstance or situation that God may be choosing to take some things out of your life in order that he could put some things into your life. Sometimes the people that lose their home gain more than they ever purchased before because they find that their household is in the Lord and not in the possession. I know on many occasions we're looking back on my own life when God has wiped out my life and brought back even more depth and meaning to who I am as opposed to who I was before he wiped out those things that I had. And even in the spiritual life, God constantly works within us to take out of us all that dross and husk and junk that we have put in that he removes that we might become a holy people. But in the process, we feel like we might not survive it we might perish and that's what God wants you to know today is that if he's sifting you like wheat if he's trying you like fire if he's putting you through a process where you're growing then don't resist as much as recognize that it's the hand of the Lord that allows these things to come into your life that they are meant for your preservation not your destruction so when it occurs, as it occurs, just know that when it's over, you can be glad that God only allowed as much as he needed to do in your life in order to accomplish what he needed to do in mine also. It gets tough, and it gets rough, but the Lord said he would never give up on us, nor leave us, or forsake us.